Welcome back to Keep It Real Boxing. This is Cypher Box. So the Daily Mail in the last couple of days has reported that Tyson Fury will be making £20 million for his rematch against Deontay, Deontay Wilder. From what I understand, the purse split for that fight is 50-50, which means Deontay Wilder would also be making £20 million. If you convert that into dollars, that's $25.5 million each, which is a massive increase from the first fight. The first fight, now I'm seeing a lot of things on Twitter where people are comparing, oh, Deontay Wilder made $4 million for his first fight. Oh, gets Wilder and AJ is now getting $32 million for his fight against Jared Mello and his US debut. Um, look, the $4 million that people are referring to, that was the guarantee for the fight, for the first fight against Tyson Fury. So he was guaranteed $4 million. Tyson Fury was guaranteed $3 million, right? Afterwards, after the fight, their total earnings was reported that Deontay Wilder made $14 million. And Tyson Fury made somewhere around the $10 million mark, which worked out to about just under $8 million. All right, but reports are that he gave $7 million of that to a homeless charity here in the UK, which I don't know if it's true or not, but if he did, shout out, shout out to him for that, you know, because I don't know many who would do that. Um, but that's a quite a big increase in their earnings in the last two fights. And... My question is, what does this do for future negotiations with Anthony Joshua? Now, it's also been reported that Anthony Joshua, for his fight with Jarrell Miller, will be making somewhere between 30 to $32 million. Convert that into pounds, that's £25 million. Which means he'll, getting, he'll be getting in pounds, he'll, he'll be getting £5 million uh, more pounds than... £5 million pounds more than Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder. So, it feels like... If these are true reports, if these reports are true and accurate, that means it feels like Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder are closing the gap on on um, Anthony Joshua. Which means, what does this do for future negotiations or potential negotiations with Anthony Joshua? It's going to make them a little bit more difficult. Now, I've always said from day one that I agree that AJ is the A-side and he deserves to ask you know it should be a 60 40 split i've always said that throughout all my videos you all know that it's nothing new you're hearing from me all right but with the way tyson fury and Dante wilder are going at the moment with the momentum they're getting they're starting to build popularity they're starting to build their profiles they're starting to grow their profiles and more people are starting to get in, inter interested in them which means more investments being put into them which means they're making more money and the longer this continues, the tougher the negotiations with AJ are going to get. Yeah. And the tougher the demands are going to get from Tyson Fury and, and Deontay Wilder. Not only that, Dillian White recently started playing a bit of hardball with Anthony Joshua and Eddie Hearn. You know, and I'm not knocking Dion, uh, Dillian White for that at all. I'm not knocking him. He knows his worth. He knows his value. He's learnt the business. He understands the business. And... He simply said, pay me my worth or there's no fight. And I'm probably going to do a separate video on that and talk about that in a bit more detail because um, there's other things that are floating around in my mind regarding that whole situation with Dillian White, Matchroom, PBC, Al Heyman, etc. But it kind of shows to me that I suppose there's more of a question that from coming from me. Is Anthony Joshua starting to lose his A-side leverage over these negotiations? with Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury. You know, as things go on, as both those guys start gaining momentum the way they are, are they losing that A-side leverage? It is AJ losing that A-side leverage. Sorry, that's what I meant. Yeah? Because it feels like they're closing the gap on him a little bit. And it makes me wonder why the sudden move to fight in the US for Anthony Joshua yeah is for me that's an attempt by them by eddie hearn and anthony joshua because remember about last year he was saying he didn't want to go to um he didn't want to go to the us he's built something here in the uk and this is where he wants to keep it you know 
Eddie Hearn didn't really want him to go to the US. He's openly admitting that this is something they're doing a lot quicker than they, they really wanted to. Let's be honest, you know? Eddie Hearn doesn't want this fight to be in the US just yet. He's openly admitted that in his recent interviews. Yeah, it's because Tyson Fury has crossed the pond and him and Deontay Wilder together have made such a big noise from the first fight and they're going to make a loud noise from the second fight. This is a business move. This is an attempt to counter what Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder are doing at the moment. It's strategy. And by getting him to cross the pond and making a noise now, Anthony Joshua that is, by getting him to cross the pond and make a noise in America or try and make a noise in America, they're hoping they can keep hold of that A-side leverage. But if these reports are true, that would show me that they're closing the gap on Anthony Joshua in terms of their earnings and their status, which will make potentially future negotiations even tougher. So if you've been frustrated now by these negotiation, negotiation periods, as I have been, you're going to get even more frustrated down the line. Not only that, Deontay Wilder has come out recently saying that even if the AJ fight doesn't happen, I got for the next two years, we've lined up our next opponents, which kind of makes me think that is one of those opponents going to be Dillian White. And I don't want to give away too much in this video. I don't want to give away too much in this video because I want to do a separate video on Dillian White. But it makes me wonder what's going on, what kind of politics are going on behind the scenes, especially with Dillian White going over and seeing um, PBC and Al Heyman, Steven Espinosa and Showtime Sports. So it's quite interesting what's going on here. But let me know what you think. This is not me trying to slate anyone or anything like that. Listen, I've done loads of videos giving my views on this whole situation. You know where I stand with it. All right. If you don't and you're new to the channel, go watch my playlist, AJ vs. Wilder. Knock yourselves out. You'll know exactly where I stand. Right. OK. And that's not me being biased. I know a lot of people say you're biased, you're one sided. That's not me being biased. What I do, like I've said time and time before, I listen to the information that's out there. I read it. I listen to the interviews. I listen to what every team, you know, is saying. Team Fury, Team Wilder, Team uh, AJ, what they're all saying. I analyze the situation, analyze the information, and then I give you my opinion. Yeah. I give you my perception of the whole situation. Straight up and honest. So, you know, it's quick. It's easy for you guys to jump in and say, oh, you're being one sided and biased. But that's the way I just see it. I can't knock. You can't sit around and start knocking me for that. That's just my uh, straight up opinion. If you don't like it, you don't like it. Fair enough. There's nothing I could do about that. But that's the way I see it. Anyway, look, just a little bit of food for thought for you guys. The questions. Is Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury starting to close the gap on Anthony Joshua in terms of earnings? And is there a danger that he loses? He's going to start losing his A-side leverage over these two guys. Food for thought. Love to know what you guys are thinking out there. As always, guys, like, share and subscribe. Until next time, this is Cyphebox reminding you to keep it real.